Thank you and welcome to my YouTube channel, English Lessons. <clears throat> we are continuing with the communicative grammar and today I'm going to continue with the English parts of speech. <clears throat> yeah, English parts of speech uh, where um, I'm going to go to lesson six and then I'm going to look at prepositions. Uh, we are going to look at prepositions. Our prepositions are very important because we have about 150 prepositions, but for today we are going to just look at 70 of them and that will be enough uh, for today's lesson. Otherwise, I advise you to go on and read more and more. So, I'm saying a preposition is a word governing and usually coming in front of a noun or a pronoun and expressing a relation to another word or element as in the following. So we are saying that a preposition will always come before a noun or a pronoun and it creates a relationship with the, the formation and with the latter noun or whatever is mentioned before whether a verb or whatever it is uh, any part of speech that is mentioned before in relation to the one that is mentioned after the preposition that's where the relation comes from for example she left before breakfast meaning the verb left happened before breakfast. What did you come for? For, for is a preposition. For what did you come? And when you listen to it clearly, as much as it's, it's a preposition, but it's creating the feeling of the reason. What do you come for? What did you come to do? So, let us look at English prepositions list. There are about 150 prepositions in English. Yet, yet, this is, uh, just sorry, I checked for something. I think something may not be. Right, okay. Let me go on. Uh, I'm saying there are about 150 prepositions in English. Yet this is a very small number when you think of the thousands of words, nouns, verbs, etc. Prepositions are important words, yeah. So we use individual prepositions more frequently than other individual words. In fact, the prepositions of, to, and in the three are among the 10 most frequent words in English. Check even what you write, check even what you speak and try to count how many of, how many to, how many in are there. So we are going to look at a, a list of 70 of the more common one word prepositions. One word prepositions. Many of these prepositions have more than one meaning. So please refer to a dictionary for precise meaning and usage because you will find as I mentioned some of the prepositions here, you would be like, but they are adjectives, but they are verbs, but they are nouns. So understand exactly what I mean when I say that they have more than one meaning. They have more than one meaning. So I start. Examples of prepositions. Except, near, over, than, until, accepting, of, past, 
through up excluding of pump to upon following on plus toward versus for onto regarding towards via from opposite round under with in outside save underneath within inside near since unlike without into by beneath around after like concerning beside us against minus considering besides at along except despite between before amid accepted down beyond behind among excluding during but below and across above about about those are some of the examples so let us move to english prepositional rule there is one very simple rule about prepositions and unlike most rules this rule has no exceptions this rule has no exceptions so the rule states like this a preposition is followed by a noun period it is never followed by a verb so by noun we include noun dog money love proper nouns like name bangkok memory pronoun could be you him us then we have what we call noun group my first job then we have what we call gerund gerund is when you put a verb in continuous tense so that it stops functioning as a as a verb but instead it functions as a noun like when i say i like you are eating i like you are eating in that sentence eating is being used as a noun and not as a verb a preposition cannot be followed by a verb no if we want to follow a preposition by a verb then we must use the in form which is really a gerund or verb in noun form so a verb in a noun form that's the only time we can use it after preposition so let us look at some examples here the food is on the table she lives in japan mary is looking for you the letter is under your blue book ross is used to english people she isn't to she isn't used to working now we are using working 
He isn't to working. I ate before coming. Now, we want to look at different types of prepositions. So we have prepositions of place. Prepositions of place. That is at, in, n, on. At, in, n, on. So there are three. At is used for a point. In is used for an enclosed space. And on is used on the surface or surface. So what are we saying? Let us look at at, meaning point. We use at when we are referring to a point, place that is a point. So at the corner, at the bus stop, at the door, at the top of the page, at the end of the road, at the entrance, at the crossroads, at the front, at the front desk. Yes. So those are prepositions of place, but for a point. Let us now look at <clears throat> prepositions of place, but in enclosed space. So here we are looking at in the garden, in London, in France, in a box, in my pocket, in my wallet, in a building, in a car. Now let us look at on, that is surface. So on the wall, on the ceiling, on the door, on the floor, on the carpet, on the menu, on a page. So let us look at example sentences where prepositions have been used. Mary is waiting for you at the bus stop. The shop is at the end of the street. My plane stopped at Dubai and Hanoi and arrived in Bangkok two hours late. When will you arrive at the office? Do you work in an office? I have a meeting in New York. Do you live in Japan? The author's name is on the cover of the book. There are no prices on this menu. You are standing on my foot. There was a no smoking sign on the wall. Yeah. I, I live on the seventh floor at 21st Oxford Street in London. <clears throat> now I want you to notice something. Notice the use of um, the prepositions of place at, in, and on in this standard. So I want to look at some standard examples here. You can just say at home, at work, at school, at university, at college, at the top, at the bottom, at the side. What about in? With in, you can say in a car, in a taxi, in a helicopter, in a boat, in a lift, which we sometimes call elevator, in the newspaper, in the sky, in a row. And remember, elevator or a lift is different from escalator but both of them serve the same purpose when we are using on we would say on a bus on a train on a plane on a ship on a bicycle on a motorbike 
on a horse, on an elephant, on the radio, on television, on the left, on the right. So that's the end of prepositions of place, at, in, and on. <clears throat> Let us move to prepositions of time. And still we are using at, in, and on, but in reference to time. So at is used for a precise time. While in is used for month, years, centuries, long periods. While on is used for days and days, for days and days. So let us see the use. Let us start with at, at three o'clock, at 10.30 a.m., at noon, at dinner time, at bedtime, at sunrise, at sunset, at the moment, at the moment. What about months, years, centuries, and long periods? In May, in summer, in the summer, in 1990, in the 1990s, in the next century, in the ice age, in the past, in the future. What about when we are referring to dates and days? On Sunday, on Tuesdays, on 6th March, on 25th December 2010, on Christmas Day, on Independence Day, on my birthday, on the New Year's Eve, or on New Year's Eve. So let us look at these examples. I have a meeting at 9 a.m. The shop closes at midnight. Jane went home at lunchtime. In England, it often snows in December. Do you think we will go to Jupiter in the future? Do you think we will go to Jupiter in the future? There should be a lot of progress in the next century. Do you work on Mondays? Her birthday is on 20th November. Where will you be on New Year's Day? So notice the use of the prepositions of time at in the following standard expression. So here we just want to look at at, at night. The stars shine at night, at the weekend. I don't usually work at the weekend, at Christmas. I stay with my family at Christmas, at the same time. We finished the test at the same time. At present, he's not home at present. So, also notice something. Notice the use of the prepositions of time in and on in this common uh, expressions. You can say in the morning, on the Tuesday morning, in the mornings, on Saturday mornings, in the afternoon, on, on Sunday afternoons, in the evening, on Monday evening. So we say last, we say last, next, every, this. That's when we say those, we do not use at, in, or on. Let me come again. When we say last, next, 
every this we do not also use at in or on for example you can say i went to london last june you cannot say i went to london in last june no i went to london last june he's coming back next tuesday he's coming back next tuesday you cannot say he is coming back on next tuesday you cannot do that i go home every easter i go home every easter you cannot say i go home at every easter no well we'll call you this evening you cannot say we'll call you in this evening you cannot say that if you happen to do that then that is that is wrong so that is wrong so um today we've been privileged to look at prepositions and of various types and therefore now you understand their usage and how to use them comprehensively correctly without making very uh, common mistakes that you can avoid while you are speaking your speaking is very important because through your speaking you communicate whatever information you have to the audience and therefore speaking it in the correct way that will help a lot otherwise this brings us to the end of this lesson and therefore i want to say thank you and when you are pumping on this video for the first time i would encourage you subscribe to it follow me and listen to me interact with me and learn more because out of interactions we learn more out of interactions we we realize our mistakes that we've been making that have become normal yes you know there are some mistakes that have been happening until they have overtaken the good of of, of what we expected until we see the vices to be normal and the virtues to be abnormal you see if a community is used to doing wrong things whenever one of them does a good thing it's abnormal to them yes like there is a subject i'm doing research on about um, marriage and no marriage you see according to god's will marriage is a good thing is a normal thing and it's supposed to be but nowadays is marriage a normal thing yes so uh you see when you talk to people they'll tell you nowadays people no longer marry so no longer marrying is becoming common and usual than marrying because when you tell somebody i'm getting married and the person is like Why? so it, it sounds abnormal it sounds uncommon it sounds peculiar like in my culture when you marry a lady you pay dowry in the standard of 12 heads of cattle one goat some money and other items that is normal that is what we expected but nowadays if you tell your friend you are doing that he's shocked because it, it doesn't sound normal nowadays somebody will say do you think people still do that so these are subject areas that require a lot of research and to be able to teach our community and our society otherwise thank you thank you very much and have a good uh friday